Catherine Marshall knew the power of prayer. Lives were changed through her gifted writing. A Man Called Peter was made into 20th Century Fox's most successful movie of 1955. It was the story of her Scottish immigrant husband, Peter Marshall, who was a Presbyterian minister and chaplain of the United States Senate. My problems with the Bible are not with the passages that I do not understand. My problems lie with the passages that I understand all too well. Catherine Marshall's novel, Christie, based on her mother's early life, was made into a breakthrough TV movie and series on CBS. Today, Peter and Catherine Marshall's son, Peter, is an evangelist with his own national ministry based in Cape Cod. He has kept his mother and father's ministries alive. He has recently released the 50th anniversary edition of A Man Called Peter and a collection of his father's sermons on audio tape. I had just turned nine when Dad died, but um, he had, and at that time he was chaplain of the United States Senate. He was pastor of a large downtown Presbyterian church in Washington, D.C., New York Avenue Presbyterian. And he traveled all over the country by train, mind you, preaching. Most of my memories of Dad are here on Cape Cod in the summertime when he did take a little bit of time. Oh, David reminded him of Scotland. That was the thing, especially with the fog um, on the Nantucket Sound of Cape Cod. Dad loved that with the fog horns blowing and, you know, from Chatham and so forth. And it just felt like Scotland to him. Not even the fans of Catherine Marshall's book, Christie, know that the real Christie was Catherine Marshall's mother, Leonora Wood, who was for a time a school teacher in the Smoky Mountains. My grandmother, Christy, of course, you know, had this real strong, rock-ribbed Presbyterian faith in the sovereignty of God, you know. And that's one of the major legacies that she left to the family. I come out of a, of a family of people that, you know, had strong personalities in that sense. Catherine Marshall had very strong opinions about intercessory prayer and healing. Catherine herself was healed of tuberculosis. That was a terrific turning point in mother's life. Another turning point was when Catherine Marshall married Leonard LeSeward, joining Catherine and her son, Peter, with the LeSeward family in 1959. During the last three years of Catherine Marshall's life, the project closest to her heart was the intercessors. The idea was to put Christians to work praying for others in need of intercessory prayer. That ministry, which she and Leonard LeSeward began in 1979, continues today as part of Breakthrough, a prayer ministry in Lincoln, Virginia. It's also out there in cyberspace, something Catherine Marshall may not have foreseen. The Lord gave her a vision of two groups of people, one group of people who were hurting and lost and needing help, needing the Lord's help, and another group of people that knew the Lord were strong prayer warriors and wanting to do something for God. But they were elderly or maybe young mothers at home with their children. And the Lord showed her that these people could do a mighty service for Him in praying for the needs of those who, who were hurt and needing. This year, Breakthrough will receive more than 100,000 prayer requests, which will be sent out to 3,700 intercessors worldwide. It's amazing how good our Lord is and how powerful it is when we all join together in prayer. Absolutely. Catherine Marshall and her son Peter have both pointed out the importance of listening to what God has to say. We think of prayer so often as just what we have to say to God, you know, what we want to ask Him to do for us, this kind of thing. Well, actually, this isn't half as important as what He has to say to us. And I'm absolutely convinced David, that God is speaking all the time. I'm equally convinced most of the time we don't hear him. In an interview for the 700 Club in 1979, Catherine Marshall did not take credit for the power of her writing. It's so evident to me that what has been accomplished in my life is not my own doing. It is not my writing per se that introduces people to Jesus or changes their lives in some way or helps them. But it is the fact that the Spirit of God Himself reaches down through that printed page at, for person after person 
you know, and speaks to them directly to their need. And then they follow through on that. And I get letters telling me the specifics of this. And, and I know that this is not my doing, mm -hmm. you know. And, and this is, a, to me, it's a, the greatest miracle of all.